another stream and uh, a live lecture at the same time. So today I'll be continuing the theme from Tuesday, analyzing my best wins in the London system. Um, we're going to continue with that team because I think it's very good for club level players. Actually, you'll see that it's possible to beat very strong players like IMs and GMs and the last one I did show my best game probably in the London and my highest rated win so in today's session we're actually going to be seeing my games from the 2022 summer actually this summer in case you're watching it in the future um, so a little backstory um, we have two games from the Paleo Horror Open I played this summer and it was like a very nice chill tournament and going to the beach before the game you know like kind of chilling and hanging out and enjoying my time there and to be honest it was a tournament I did not really want to prepare so much for the openings although I was still spending a lot of time preparing so when you prepare you want to make sure you focus a lot but again if you're playing with the white pieces I was always going for the the London system, almost always, not all the time necessarily, just to enjoy the atmosphere a bit more and prepare a bit less. So let's dive into it. This was around, I think, round number five of the tournament, and I started with the usual d4 and the knight f3. I could have also started with the bishop f4 move, but I did not want to clearly put my intentions on the board yet. In case my opponent wants to go g6, I might do something else, maybe force him into playing uh, stuff with c4 or maybe actually continue playing the London. So I did not want to reveal my hand. And in the games we're going to see today, neither of my pl opponents played anything with g6. So maybe in the future lectures I can show games I faced the move g6 on move 2, maybe here or there. But today we're not going to see any of the g6 responses. So I played knight f3, my opponent played e6, and you all guessed it, it's bishop f4. So, as we saw last time, um, this is maybe a bit harmless, but it can also be super harmful to your opponents if they don't know how they're facing. My opponent responded with c5, and also I did not really know how my opponent was going to put his pieces, so that kind of gave me a bit more comfortable time I would say because I just had no idea what my opponent was going to play so I did not get to prepare much although I was debating between playing many different openings I ended up playing the London because I couldn't decide on anything after spending hours and hours so we got into the main position of the London just like in the last lecture and in the last game I showed my opponent played like this and you can probably refer to that somewhere but in this case, my opponent played the move bishop d6, tackling this bishop. And of course, their idea is they want us to take the bishop and then they will recapture with the queen and play e5. And they're going to get a super comfortable game here. And I don't want that. So that's why I played the move bishop g3. The point is that if black captures on g3, I'm going to capture with the h-pawn and then open up the h-file. And this is good for me because it helps my rook kind of be involved with the attack. So what my opponent did, he played the move queen to e7. He's actually trying to prepare the move e5. And okay, so how do we react against our opponent trying to prepare something? First of all, the immediate question we have to ask ourselves is what do they want to do? Okay, we established that. They really want to go e5. But how do we deal with that? How do I stop the move e5? And actually I have two different moves I can play in this position. I can play the bishop to b5, pinning this knight, and I can also play what I did, I played the move knight e5, because what, what this is doing is that if you take with the knight, this would be a very bad blunder, because after d takes e5, that's a fork, and my opponent will lose a piece. And if you take with the bishop, then I'm not going to recapture, and then the game is going to go on, and there is quite some more theory maybe after knight d7 but that is uh, maybe a different story quick question in the chat says why doesn't black push c4 at what moment 
at this moment oops I'm sorry at this moment do you mean C4 or earlier like here so at which moment um, are you recommending C4 anytime so why do they never play C4 well what the reason why they don't want to play C4 now is that they don't want to decide they don't want to let go of the pressure on the center so what this pawn on C5 is doing right is it's putting pressure on um, on the d4 square. I was trying to get rid of the annotation, but I couldn't. So this pawn on c5 is putting pressure on d4. But if you play something like c4, right, now you no longer put pressure there. I can actually undermine you with this move b3, get rid of your pressure, and after you take, I take, and now I can even expand with c4, I can go bishop d3, I can continue my play however I want. And unfortunately, in this case, you cannot play b5 because your knight on c6 is hanging. So you cannot really back your pawn on c4, and you don't want to do that. If you did the same thing here, for example, while, you're, while you could technically back it up with b5, I can still play b3, and after b5, I can further attack this pawn with a4. And if you play something like a6, well, your rook is not guarded, so I can always take, and you can never recapture because your rook is hanging. So c4 is not really something the black player wants to do unless the bishop is on d3 and there's a much better timing to it. So for example, a line where people play c4, I have seen and also faced myself is the move bishop e7. Let's say white goes something like h3. Let's say black castles or maybe another move bishop d3. And this idea of c4 exists in this situation where black can get a tempo on this bishop and then try to launch a queenside attack. What this would allow white to do though, is play something like queen e2, not necessarily queen e2, but something like queen e2, followed by e4, breaking the center, and trying to launch a kingside attack, because the most common idea we have is, if the center is closed, right, this is closed center, there is no pressure, you should definitely try to attack on the flanks. Exactly what black is doing, we're gonna do the opposite on the other side because we have more pieces on the king side that can cause trouble, especially this bishop on c2. So my opponent played bishop d6, and then we got to this position, knight e7, knight e5. And here, instead of taking, he played the move knight d7. And I was definitely within my preparation, but I just could not remember everything, because I, I didn't expect this line, and I didn't check it. So I was trying very hard to remember what actually the preparation was. Because my opponent's idea is very simple. If I take on d7, they're going to recapture. And I can almost always, I mean, I can actually never stop this move e5. If I play f4, now I shut down my bishop. And I'm not a big fan of this. It's not going to be good for me. And I don't really want to play f4 just yet. Because I'm not really sure how the play develops after, let's say, my opponent castles. And then he has this idea of playing f6 at some point, kicking this knight out of the way, and then trying to go e5. So this is a potential danger I was kind of like scared of. Also, what kind of comes to my mind now is maybe they can play the move f6 here. Because, yeah, usually f6 would have been a blunder. But in this case, after check, maybe there is the move g6. And I'm not saying this is necessarily true but after knight takes g6 which is the common idea to win the rook after takes we would win the rook but i'm not sure what happens if they play something like uh, queen f7 putting some extra pressure on this knight maybe this is not exactly true because maybe there is this move f5 um, this does require calculating but i think the knight escapes from here so it doesn't quite work but it's risky, so maybe f6 is not good. Maybe they're just going to castle and then play f6. But that's something to keep in mind. There's a lot of pieces hanging in the position, which I don't want to get involved with. So what I did was I played the move bishop b5. I could kind of remember something like this um, from when I, whenever I was preparing. Uh, not specifically for this game, in general. With the idea that you cannot double take on e5 at any moment, with, regardless of what piece you capture with. You cannot take on e5 back because I'm going to take. And whatever knight you have left on d7 or c6 is pinned. So you cannot capture on e5. 
And this in fact happened in the game. And here my opponent played bishop back to c7. So their idea is that I'm going to castle next move. I'm going to put pressure here. If you're going to go f4, well, you better play it now or maybe the next move because otherwise you're going to lose your pawn or you have to give up your bishop pair or I'm going to break with f6 at the convenient time and get the center. So you're not going to be happy overall with your play. And whenever white goes f4, by the way, black does sometimes have this idea of playing c4 in this case. Oops, hopefully I didn't do anything wrong with the mic. And then queen c5. So um, f4 was not in my agenda. But what can I play here then? If I'm not going to go f4, if I'm not going to do anything like that, how do I protect my um, pawn, let's say, on e5? How do I take care of it? Let's see if anyone in the chat has any suggestions. Or in person, of course. E4 is a suggestion. E4 is interesting, but I don't see I don't see how you're defending this pawn if I castle, for example. I don't see how you are really taking care of anything. Because if you take, take, now you're exposing your king even further, right? We don't want to do that. Knight f3 is a good suggestion. Yeah, everybody's saying knight f3. But let's say I castle. How do we play then? We castle, he castles, right? Okay. So maybe he's going to go like bishop d7. I don't know. And I don't see... I don't exactly know how do we like continue the play. Yeah, sure, I can attack his queen, but his queen is not going to be lost. He's going to go queen e8. He has some defense against it. And, okay, I wasn't very happy with this. Like, I don't know how to attack. I don't know how to proceed in this position. F6 is probably going to come at some point. And, yeah, maybe maybe we're not doing that fantastic. We need something more dynamic. And whenever I play the London, I don't just play the London for the sake of playing London, right? I, I would like to attack somehow. I played the move queen g4. And what's the idea of queen g4? Well, our, our opponent, with their last move, actually... We always should ask ourselves what our opponents want with their last move. Even if it's like a retreating move, our opponent always has a purpose on the next move. Always. Even if they recapture something. Even if they are doing an like a empty looking move. They do want to do something. And my opponent wants to castle. It's his own right. It's the simplest thing, simplest thing he can ask for. But I don't want him to castle with such ease. So the reason I played queen g4 is if you castle now, which I think is okay. I mean, it's not like losing or anything. But in this case, this runs into some serious danger. Let's see if the, the chat can figure out kind of how it might lead to some dangerous position for, um, for black. Take the knight, then bishop h4, bishop f6. Yep. Exactly. Takes, takes, and then bishop h4. Threatening the queen. And this actually forces you to play f6, in my opinion. Because if you play like queen somewhere back, I'm going to play the worst one probably, which is queen e8. Now I go bishop to f6, I'm threatening mate. You have to respond, you have to go g6. And now I bring my queen from h4, or from g5 actually, probably better. From g5 to h6 to g7, and you cannot stop it. Because even if you try, I'm fine, you can take it. And after takes, takes, you cannot stop the mate. So that's the point. That's my point. I played queen to g4 with the idea that if my opponent castles, which is very natural, I'm going to take on c6 and then go bishop h4. Okay, sure, he could have maybe played f6 and then sacrificed a pawn and then the game goes on. It's not the end of the world, I would say. But... It's not ideal to give up a pawn, right? You don't want to just give up a pawn and play the game. Nobody wants to, to do that. Um, they're not going to get in huge trouble, but they're just going to be down a pawn for some compensation, but maybe not full compensation. So what my opponent did actually is he played the move queen f8, which slightly surprised me, I would say. Although I think I understand his idea behind it. His idea is as far as I understood during the game, is to go bishop d7 and castle long. So they're like, I'm going to cover the king side with my queen. 
and I'm going to run to the other side. And I'm like, okay, that actually makes sense, you know? He wants to, um, he wants to go to the other side. Oh, Brad in the chat asks, why take first? I'm assuming you're, you're saying, why take here first and why not bishop h4? Yeah, so bishop h4 immediately is also possible. Probably a very good move. But a slight concern is if they... Oh, actually, you're right. Knight e5, I calculated this. Now I recall everything. Knight takes e5 is possible. But here, you take on e7. And after knight g4, if you take the rook, I would say black has decent compensation. But I remember recalculating. Here I was going to go bishop c5. So you are right. I'm not forced to take the knight first. Because bishop c5 says that I'm still attacking your rook. And if you go rook d8 to rescue it, I'm going to go back to e7 and I'm going to trap the rook. So you're absolutely right. I do not have to take on c6. It's definitely an option. But if I want to preserve the bishop pair, and this would be the right move. Probably better than bishop takes knight. So that's a good catch. Um, queen f8. Yeah, queen f8, to me, it looked... It looked a bit passive, I would say. So how do we try to take advantage of that? Well, what do we have to do? Like, what do you do in this situation with the, with the white pieces? What would you guys like to play? You take the knight, absolutely. Absolutely, it's time to, uh, <laughs> the queen has castled, yes. It is time to ruin the pawn structure, because if my opponent wants to go bishop out castles long, I want the pawn structure ruined, so that I can attack someday uh, if they're on the queen side. Maybe I can swing my queen suddenly to a4 and put pressure to all these squares with just a very simple shift. And now, what do we do? Very simple, we castle. Why castle? Because just finish your development. So it's quite simple. Instead of, instead of going maybe crazy with like f4, f5 or whatever, I just want to first develop my pieces and ask my opponent, what do you actually want to do in this position? And my opponent replied with bishop a6, attacking my rook. So how do we respond? What do I have to do in this situation? My rook is being under attack and I have plenty of options here. I can play rook e1, I can play rook d1, they're all super tempting. Like, I mean, how do you even identify the difference between rook e1 and rook d1? Why should the rook be on e1? Why should the rook be on d1? Or should it be on c1? Or should it be on b1? To be honest, I think all of those moves have a purpose. You can put it on e1 to go e4. You can go to d1 because it's a semi-open file and it might actually open. You can go to c1 because you can go c4. You can even go to b1. I'm not going to blame you for anything because you might want to go b4, a4, and the rook is going to be super helpful. So all of those moves, and there's also c4 also as an option mentioned in the chat. c4 is also a move. So there are so many moves in this position, and it was super hard to decide. And what did I do? Very practical choice, by the way. I could have easily spent quite a lot of time, like 15, 20 minutes, thinking about this position where the rook belongs. I just played the move rook e1. Am I saying that it's the best? Maybe not, maybe yes, but it's just very practical. I just played it because I naturally felt like the rook just should go to e1 and the queen should have an escape square on d1 just in case it gets in trouble. And yeah, that was my thought process. Queen a4 was definitely something I was looking at because it double attacks the bishop and the pawn. And if my opponent takes the, bish the rook, then I take on c6, and then I'm going to either win the rook or win the bishop and then the other bishop. But the problem with that is what we call this intermediate move concept, where my opponent can play the move bishop b5, attack my queen, force my queen to leave the pressure from c6, say I go back to c2, and then they take my rook. And now I'm not going to be happy because I just lost an exchange for nothing. So we don't want to get that tactic. But what I did was I played the move rook e1. Again, I'm not claiming this is the best move, but in my opinion, I wanted to go e4 at some point and then take 
and then maybe c4 at some point maybe take again if i get the opportunity and then go e6 if i can and then this king and rook they are aligned yes for now it's very imaginary that this pawn move going forward will lead to something but i did feel that this was the right move was c4 a possibility for sure i just didn't want my queen to be like defending this guy and have to deal with something like h5 actually very critical situation for my bishop on g3 if i do something wrong my bishop can easily get trapped on g3 so i have to watch out for this king side attack as well so i played rook e1 my opponent played the move h5 hitting my queen i did play queen a4 attacking both the bishop and the pawn he did play bishop b5 and i brought my queen back to c2 so why did i go from here to there and not all the way back immediately. What was my purpose of making my opponent gain a tempo with bishop b5 while retreating? Well, multiple things. I would say that the bishop on b5 is more subject to attacks like c4, a4, and it's kind of hanging out in the middle of the board um, for no obvious reasons. So. And yeah, once, my, once the pieces kind of go forward, I'm going to kick this guy out, take this guy, open up the position, try to, try to attack. And it also keeps the rooks connected. So one day I might play the move like rook A to D1. And that was another reason why I picked the E1 square for the F rook, because maybe this rook on A1 will join the attack from the D file. That's what I was thinking. So my opponent played H4, attacking my bishop. Of course, I'm not going to give up my bishop. And my opponent here played the most surprising move, I would say, of the game. He played bishop from c7 to a5. Took me a while to understand um, what the idea of this move is. I mean, I, I understand what it is. His point is that he asked himself the question, what does white want to play? White definitely wants to play c4. So he played the move bishop a5, anticipating c4. And if I go c4, he's going to take on... Um, d2 and after queen takes he's just going to capture the pawn so i think that's his idea but is c4 my only chance i don't think so i think i have other ideas too so i played a4 hit the bishop bishop dropped back and now i think i have multiple different choices and a couple of them are good what i did is definitely decent as well so I'm curious how the chat would play in this position. Um, I was definitely calculating quite some stuff here, but I think there are a couple of good ways you can proceed with the white pieces here. So let's see. B4 is one suggestion. Okay. Everybody's saying B4. The chat has been hanging out with me a little too much. <laughs> E4 is another move. But yeah, you guys, you guys, you guys can guess my moves now. I played B4 because yeah, everyone is saying B4. I'm actually like shocked. Okay, a couple of people are not saying B4, but everyone is spamming B4. So yeah, that's what I played because, well, simply because if you take, I take, right? And then I'm attacking C6 while I'm attacking the bishop. So that means you cannot win my pawn. Um, although like you can still maybe try to do this, but it doesn't work because I take there i take yeah and if you take i give a check and then i take the rook or you have to block with the bishop i win the bishop so yeah perfect chat is on fire so they he played bishop c7 now what i mean my opponent is a strong international master um or he's a fida master i'm not sure but he's super strong so he's not gonna fall for that what do we do now he i mean yeah we tried the cheap trick did not quite work. Um, so how do we proceed in this moment? <clears throat> Instead of bishop a4, what about rook g5? Okay, I see. There's a quick question. Let's answer that. It's typed upside down, but I understand the idea. So the suggestion is instead of playing bishop to a5, what would have happened if your opponent played the move rook h5 with the idea to go g5 and then trap this guy? Very good question, actually. And it's also attacking this guy at the same time. Um, as far as I remember, I can even play the move e4 here. 
it might not be the most accurate, but I can definitely play it. Um, and another thing is I can definitely play knight f3. I think that's what I had in mind, worst case. And then go e4 next move. But you can also think about playing c4 here. It's another idea. And after takes, maybe then play something else, like maybe knight e4 or something. Give up, give up some material, but get some initiative and so on. So something to think about. I'm not 100% sure how it's possible to react, but it's possible definitely something like this. Or maybe a4 first and then something else. But good question. This is a good move, I would say. Also, in the worst case, worst case, um, although I don't really want to do that, probably e4 is the move. e4, bishop takes, bishop takes, rook takes, <coughs> maybe something like, oh, actually, I know, we take. You cannot take with the rook because I go c4. And if you take, I take, you take, and maybe c4 here kind of open up the position. Like I'm just playing with instincts without really calculating anything. You just kind of go, uh, go forward. And if after e4, g5, I would say we sack this pawn. We go back. And if you ever take, I take. And you're going to be in some deep trouble in this file. You cannot probably just casually play or whatever because it's just going to be super dangerous. And if you take, I'm going to go c4, open up the king. The king, the rook, they're just not coordinated. So... Even though I'm down a pawn, I'm fine with it. Like, pawn is not that important if I can get to your king. So, <clears throat> um, knight f6 would fork the pawn and the rook. At what moment? At what moment? I feel like it was in, in some different line. But yeah, it was probably in the line where I said knight goes to e4. Something like this. Try to go there. Maybe, but there's this guy, right? So it doesn't quite work. But anyways, fast forward to the game, e4, he played queen e7. I played e4 here, by the way. So knight b3 is definitely interesting too. I saw that was recommended in the chat. Definitely a move to try to go to c5. Um, <clears throat> but I played e4 because I want to try to use my rook on, um, on e1. The whole point of me playing rook e1 was to actually go e4. I could also maybe play something like c4, so there are plenty of options. But I wanted to at least semi-open this file. If I can open up something with this rook on e1, I might benefit from it quite a lot. And my opponent, logically, he's like, okay, I actually want to go short castles. You know what? I changed my plan. I'm going to go there, and then I'm not going to go this way. I'm like, okay, that makes sense. So how do I deal with that? My opponent's about to run to the king side. And I don't really have any attackers on the king side left. Like, there is nobody left. Everyone is on the queen side, hanging out, or the center. So if I were to cut the board into, like, three sections, I have my queen and the rook on the queen side. I have a bunch of guys, two guys on the center, and then I have the bishop. That's it, on the king side. So I don't really have any attackers. So what do I do? How can I try to prevent him from running away from me in this position? Knight f3, maybe to go bishop g5. Interesting. Knight f3, castles, bishop g5. Yeah, definitely a possibility. Definitely a possibility. And then try to go after this guy. Is he going to castle immediately after knight f3? Maybe, maybe not. This is a good move, I would say. So here, you want to just gang up on this guy and then continue the game. So knight f3 is a good move. That's not what I played, but I think it's a good move. E D5, C D5, and then Rook E3 is a suggestion. Something like this with the idea to kind of prepare, bring another piece, and then go Knight F3, Bishop G5. I like that too. That's another very good suggestion. These are all very good ideas, by the way. I had something completely different in my mind. And it was more of a positional approach, I would say. Not super concrete towards where his king was going, but it was, <clears throat> it was more like, I'll let you castle, but I'll win material if you do. That, that was the kind of approach I took. And in this position, I played bishop e3. So I played e4, and then I made some space for my bishop to sort of come back and take on c5. And if you were to castle, of course, that's the whole point, right? I'm going to take on c5 and then take your rook up in exchange. Probably I'm going to win the game. 
So my opponent, he took on e5, free pawn. Because I under defended my pawn. He's like, I'll take it. Why not? If you're giving me a free pawn, I'll take it. Okay, now I think the move is quite interesting. So for sure I can take on c5. It's definitely a good move. But I was like, hmm, maybe I can, maybe I can do a bit more. Because his bishop on e5 is kind of like loose. So, and I don't really like my knight on d2. I'm like, I can actually improve it. I played knight f3. I attack the bishop on e5. If he retreats to c7, which he didn't, now I'm going to take. So now I just suddenly improved my knight with a tempo. And then maybe next move I'm going to take on d5. Start opening things up. And also maybe I'm going to use my rook on d1. So let's say you play the queen to d7 or something. right? Now I can potentially take one day. I'm not forced to. I can bring my rook, try to go b5. And this king is suddenly not finding any shelter. So my opponent, after knight f3, played bishop d6. He's like, okay, I'm not going to immediately allow that. But then I played the move e5. I'm like, okay, you got to go. You cannot stay on d6. And then he played bishop c7, and then I took. The reason I did all this is I have full control of the dark squares. And actually, the most ideal scenario for me would be to trade these guys off. And then my knight would dominate his bishop. Because the bishop on a6 is super useless. It doesn't do anything. It's not contributing to anything. It's not attacking anywhere. It's just not useful. So that's my dream scenario. I would like to get rid of that bishop in any case. And then pure domination on the dark squares. So my opponent played queen d7. And by the way, there are many other like good moves. I see in the chat, like some, some of the viewers, they suggested f4. All of this is good, but I don't really want to like launch my pawns and maybe weaken my king. I know this is super hypothetical, but like this f4 pawn is like loose. So I want to just slowly improve my pieces, not like pushing too many pawns, more like pieces, not the pawns, you know, that made more sense to me. My opponent plays queen d7. So, okay, what does he want to do? Well, maybe he wants to castle long, but a7 is hanging. So he's not going to give up a7. And I'm like, this bishop is doing great. This knight is doing well, I would say. I mean, I can put it on d4, but why? The rook on e1 is like doing fantastic. I mean... I don't really have a better square for any of those guys, but I was like, the queen, I mean, am I really maximizing the queen? I told myself, no, I don't think so. And here I played the move queen to d2. What's the point? Well, queen to d2, I want to go to g5, I want to take on g7. I'm very aggressive. Now at this point, I'm like, okay, I can, uh, I can try to go get him. a5 to prevent bishop b6 is another suggestion. Well, I don't really mind bishop b6, to be honest. If bishop b6, I put my bishop on d6. If you go back, I honestly don't mind the trade that much. Because the dark squares are going to be my control. So he's not going to do that. Queen d2, rook h5. And okay, I think here... Um, I think here I played a very good move. And this is probably what separates like a GM from like maybe other players, I would say. So let's see who can guess the move in the chat. I would say this is a this is a move I would play almost always. I, I don't know, maybe. I'm not sure. Like if I see this move, I'll play it nine times out of ten. We have more space, shouldn't we stop a trade? Yes, but this trade I like. I like the trade of the dark squared bishops in a specific situation. I'm not going to trade all the time. I'm not saying trade all your pieces. Um, and yeah. Okay, one, one suggestion is, and the sentence exactly is, I'm too fearful and played h3. Okay, that's interesting. Because that's exactly what I played. h3. And I think this is a great move, by the way. And many, many players are saying h3. Many of the viewers. Why h3? It's... I mean, aren't we trying to checkmate the guy? I thought we were just doing something with his king. Why are we playing h3? Well, h3 is, uh, first of all, I don't want to get back cranked at any moment. I also don't want my opponent to play h3 and get counterplay at any, at any instance. I'm just going to play h3 myself. So, okay, he has zero counterplay now. 
and that's the whole point I don't want my opponent having any counterplay whatsoever he plays this move bishop to c4 okay bishop to goes to c4 great I don't really care I played queen to d4 what do I want maybe I want to take the pawn I might be too greedy well my opponent's like okay no I'm not giving you the pawn okay and I'm like okay your bishop on c4 is annoying I'll kick you out knight d2 bishop went back to a6 and we have been playing a lot with those pieces which piece did we ignore the rook well it's the time okay d1 what's my idea what's my threat with rook d1 well rook d1 not only improves the rook on a1 but it actually threatens something sneaky it threatens the move knight e4 so let's say you played some random move like g6 i'm gonna go knight e4 and i want to go put my knight on d6 so this useless knight on d2 wants to land on d6 and is my opponent gonna allow that no he's not he had almost no time he was playing like um on increment it's almost like mate but it's just not coming through for example i was even calculating knight e4 here and after you take you go queen e4 you're threatening you're threatening checkmate you're so close he has this move rook h8 he just goes back and defends i mean it looks like he has bishop d3 too i had all this kind of calculated i can actually take on e4 and i would be fine because you cannot recapture it because it's mate however there is this rook h8 defense that holds everything together and if i give him the next move he might go queen c7 try to trade this queen not gonna work so i cannot go knight e4 what i did i played this move c4 all of you guys were thinking about this move c4 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 well what do i want to do kind of want to expand on the queen side of it maybe not take i mean my opponent doesn't have much time so he's like 30 seconds almost about to flag trying to not flag he took on c4 he's like there is no immediate danger because if i play something like this he's, he always has this move rook h8 he, he's kind of relying on this defense so and i'm like okay i'll actually take it not go queen d6 i took that pawn so the position opened up a little bit more and his king is way more exposed than it was before because now his d5 pawn left i w if i was him i would try to stay as solid as possible and not lose immediately but it's kind of hard to just stay passive and not do anything the whole game he wasn't doing much right if you look at it this rook hasn't moved at all this rook moved once but it's like you don't really want rook h5 um, maybe bishop b6 definitely it's possible bishop b6 could have been a could have been an attempt to kind of like get out of things but i don't see how you get out of anything if i'm like okay just show me what you have are you gonna really take this and then stay like that without doing much it's just too passive you know like you can go play queen b7 maybe or something like that but then the rook is gonna come this is hanging it's just not happening you know bishop e7 it still is not gonna solve your problems right i'm gonna take take maybe give a check and then rook d6 this is chaos i mean i'm gonna take go rook e7 mate is coming it's impossible definitely not fun so my opponent played queen b7 he's trying to do something i'm not sure even what but i played here there now all i have to do is gather my pieces and end the game somehow i need these guys in the game the rook on e1 did his job it did his job and now time to bring this rook what is the idea of rook d6 well since my opponent doesn't have much time i'm trying to kind of provoke him to play something like bishop e7 this would end the game immediately to a nice finish with rook takes e6 and after f takes i can go queen g6 pick this guy up that's it it's just game over so what he did was he played rook f5 and i played the move rook e to d1 sort of trying to maybe play like rook d7 or something and of course it wasn't um super obvious what i wanted but i did kind of want my opponent to take on e5 which he did and in this position i played queen f4 attacking the rook and trying to invade from h6 to f8 so a nice line for example could have been rook f5 queen f8 rook h5 but then i have rook takes d8 rook takes d8 queen f8 mate 
So what happened instead in the game is my opponent played the move rook h5, trying to cover the h6 square, but he forgot that I can go rook takes e6, and he resigned here because after it takes that would have been mate. So that was the that was round number five, and uh, that was a good game. So hopefully that was something educational. But now on to the next game. Right. Now on to the next game. This is actually round number seven of the same tournament. So backstory again. I'm hanging out at the beach before the game. Don't know what to do, what opening to play. And then the light bulb comes to my mind. Play the London. But then I tell myself, okay, I just played the London like two games ago. And now I'm playing a Grandmaster. And the Grandmaster is definitely going to prepare. I mean, I just played London like two games ago, like impossible. And then I go d4, knight f6, knight f3, the same way, he goes e6, bishop f4. And then my opponent starts thinking. And I'm like, what? You did not prepare anything? I just played the London, like all, and I've been playing the London like somewhat regularly at this point. My opponent started thinking, he was like thinking hard. He's like, which system do I pick? And then he goes d5. Now you, all of you know this, e3, bishop d6. Okay, and I'm like, I'll deviate a bit. I'm not going to put the bishop on g3 just yet. Just be a bit cheeky. Castles, knight d2, c5. And I'm like, okay, it's time. Let's go to, let's go to um, g3. He played um, queen c7. And the idea of queen c7 is that black wants to go knight bd7 and then go e5. That's their idea. And I know that. So I took on c5. And... My opponent captured with the queen, and I played bishop d3. So I've played this position multiple times before, and um, <clears throat> my opponent responded with knight bd7. And here, this is, I would say, a critical moment if you do not know the position. So this is not your usual London system position. This is a bit more different than that. So what do we do with the white pieces? We don't have our pawn on d4 anymore. It's, it's no longer there. We took on c5, it disappeared now. So what do we do? How do we play? Options we have, we have options, yes. We do have options. What is our option? What would you play if you were playing with the white pieces? I think there are, there's two good moves here, as far as I know, yeah. Knight move, knight move where? Castle, um, castles maybe. But I don't really want to castle, because then we kind of gave up the center for nothing, right? I would try to trade everything and offer a draw. I don't want to do that. Like, see, I'm almost 100 points higher rated than my opponent, and I want to win the tournament. I don't just want to make draw and not win the tournament. So that's not what I went for. <laughs> it's a smart choice maybe sometimes, but not always. I played the move queen e2. It's the idea of queen e2. Well, I want to go e4. And then go e5. If I can do that, I'll be I'll be very happy. So <clears throat> that's what I played. My opponent took on g3. I captured. Then I was like, okay, thank you, because that's very nice. I am putting more pressure on h7. And of course, if I castle, my pressure will disappear. But um, my opponent's not gonna. I mean, I hope he wasn't expecting me to castle short because there's no way. He played h6. Okay, so we have developed everything, but our king is still in the middle. What do we have to do? King safety. Where do I put the king? Here or there? At this point, I think everybody knows that 100 times out of 100 times, I'll castle king, queenside. Because I am not about castling short and playing this game slowly. I want to checkmate this guy um, as fast as I can. So my opponent played rook e8. What is he preparing? Well, my opponent is probably preparing something like e5 and e4. It's pretty cool. But I launch e4 before him. And then what he does is he takes, I take, he takes, and critical moment of the game. Do I take with the queen or do I take with the bishop? What do we do? Queen takes is the most natural, right? Queen takes is the most natural, threatening queen h7. But what's my opponent going to do? Is he going to let me? Of course not. 
he's gonna play knight to f6 and once my queen goes somewhere well so this is under attack right I have to keep that in mind so choices I can I can try to trade the queen maybe play an end game do I really want to play an end game no not really I can play this but then my opponent gets the bishop out the bishop might go to c6 the rook might come and if I don't mate him soon it's not gonna happen I can also go queen h4 but then I have to deal with e5 e4 coming bishop g4 coming rook joining the defense with like not b8 rook c8 rook d8 I don't want any of that so I played bishop takes and this was this was quite sneaky I would say I really had this one trap that my opponent might fall for and he fell for it and he played I guess I'll ask you guys what what did black play what is my trap let's see if you can predict everyone is gonna look for something tactical now it is kind of tactical yeah my opponent played um, the most obvious move and the most obvious move is a bad move knight f6 okay so there is a chat there's a question they're asking why do we not go queen c2 and we play queen e2 I'm gonna address that actually that's a good question so they're saying why do we not play queen c2 and played queen e2 well I'll answer the very simple terms I put the queen so that after all these exchanges happen although it didn't happen in the game I have my queen in front of my bishop so that I can checkmate him with my queen that's the idea right I'm also supporting the e4 e5 push I'm supporting the fork you know if I have my queen on c2 I'm not supporting anything right okay in this case I don't need it because it's not attacked by sufficient number of like it's not defended by enough pieces but say his queen drops back to c7 I want my queen supporting my push and queen on c2 is not as dangerous it's not threatening anything right it's just I would say it's just uh, it's just blank there is no there is no threat and maybe he'll just rush with something like this I have to sort of defend and then he might take take and then maybe take take and then knight f6 and then he can run with e4 maybe something like this it's just annoying you know I mean sure you can give up your bishop on e4 but I really like my bishop I don't want to give it up I mean in this case it's acceptable but not quite what I did so after bishop e4 yes he played knight e5 which is a very bad move and I was really hoping he would play this it's also the most natural move because like if you think about it on almost every single opening we have seen in our like life just very fast forward like fast back I would say let's say you play the French right you play the French uh, I don't know you go knight f knight d7 your idea is always to go like knight f6 stuff like that you always want to put your uh, knight to f6 and then recapture with this knight it's just a common response knight on d7 goes to f6 in like so many different openings so my opponent played that why is this a mistake well um, the mistake is exactly mentioned in the chat knight e5 and this is the trick that I was really hoping my opponent falls for why is this a trick well if you take I give a check if you take now you lose your queen so you just lost your queen for two pieces but then you're not gonna get out of this so what my opponent did is he took my bishop I mean of course I wanted to have my bishop yes that's correct but in this case he is just not developing anymore there is no there is no development what is the threat of knight e5 the threat of knight e5 is just preventing my opponent from developing that's it we're playing in a battlefield where I have all my attackers and you don't have any attacker you're you're just sitting down you can't play bishop d7 that's it so I asked myself what is my opponent's idea with knight f6 it's not to take my bishop the idea is to get the bishop out to somewhere there so now knight e5 and takes takes yeah he can play rook b8 yes that's true you can do that and the game would still go on but for example it might be too slow I'll go g4 maybe and then try to go g5 and yes you're probably gonna run your pawns also down the board or maybe b5 maybe a bit more 
with some more venom but I just go I'm trying to mate the king yes you can play bishop b7 yes you can be annoying you're not you're never gonna take this guy right it's impossible I'm just gonna retreat and then continue my attack maybe push right funny line here takes takes check there mate I just made this up but it's funny so that's the point b5 does look strong but it's just not it's not doing anything there is no threat like even if I'm scared I'll just go c4 you cannot break through I'm gonna put this pawn on b3 you're never gonna go through anywhere like this pawn chain you're not gonna be in time while you're getting checkmated you can do anything you want on the queen side I can also fork you with knight d7 at some times although in this case g5 is on so I'm gonna be more focused on your king before my king is even in danger it's about who made who first it's not really about um, anything else so and then he played this move queen e7 which is also a very bad move um, his point basically is that he wants to go f6 I guess and then e5 that's what he wants and the reason he did not play f6 here um, as far as I remember, it might be queen g6, if I remember correctly. It might be queen g6. I'm threatening this guy, and after rook f8, I do have some stuff here. That I'm for sure of. But let's see what it is. Hmm. Don't quite remember what it is. I'm trying to calculate as we were talking, of course. What is it with check? Is rook h6 possible? Rook h6, queen e5. That's what I'm calculating. Instead of queen g6, rook h6. Yes, queen takes. And then. Knight d7. Yeah, yeah, that's another line. I don't see the win in this one though. Although, check. It's close. Actually, maybe it's winning. Check here. If check, king goes there. So we couldn't mate him yet. Okay. Let's 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 verify our opinion. If f6, queen g6, yeah, correct. Rook f8, ah, f4. Okay. I feel like I did see something like this in the game. And after takes now, rook h6. Yep, that makes sense. And then this is coming okay that helps so my opponent played queen e7 i was shocked when he played queen e7 to be honest and here i played f4 so same idea as we just saw i did play this move f4 and my opponent here played rook d8 he could have he could have maybe played um f6 but then f6 definitely loses this i know Let's see if you guys can find it. And I'll just verify my opinion. Yep, that was it. That was it, yep. Now I remember how the lines go. F6, this is his point. And when I played F4, I knew that I'm preventing F6. With a very sneaky idea. The idea is this, and after takes, rook h6. We just saw something like that. And the point, the actual point is after queen f7, I have rook h8 check, takes, queen takes. Next move, rook h1, checkmate. So my opponent played the move rook d8. His pieces are not moving. I just took it, took it, and then brought this rook. So now I don't really want to checkmate him anymore because I don't have to checkmate him. His pieces are not developed. They're not going to develop if I don't want them to develop. I am keeping them all hostage here with all my pieces, with my rook, with my knight. I'm just saying you're playing down a rook and bishop. So he played this move queen c7. And here I played a super annoying move, I would say. I did um, I did quite annoy him with this move, I would say. I played the move queen c4. I'm like, I want to trade queens. And if you take my queen, my point was to go rook d8 check in between move. And after king h7, I take... And my next move is going to be knight d6. And in this situation, if you want to get out of this pin, what you would want to do is go b6 and then bishop b7 so that you can defend. 
But then I still go knight d6. I hit the bishop, and after bishop b7, so close, but yet so far, I take the bishop and defend my rook. So this was the whole idea of playing queen to c4. Super annoying, but it works. My opponent's like, no, I don't want you to trade queens. And then here I played the move queen to a3, with the I, queen to a4, sorry. I want to go queen e8 check, and then pick up f7. My opponent played king f8. He's like, no, I don't want you to go there. And now, check. My opponent, I was expecting him to go to g8, but then I would have played this move queen to e7, and then just pick up everything, and it's going to be mate very soon. So my opponent played the move king e8. All right. Now, how do we proceed in this position? And I'll answer some questions. Do you study your opponent's games? Yeah, you have to do all of that. You have to study for your opponent's games. You have to study your own openings. You have to work on tact tactics. Excuse me. You have to do many things, many, many things. Uh, which openings are most of the GMs studying these? Well, that's exactly what I'm showing, the London. The London is exactly good for lazy people like me, you know. If you're a college student at the same time and you're also a GM at the same time, you don't have much time to always work on chess. So you just play something that's relatively easy to play. This is exactly the topic of today. Um, so yeah, knight c4, yes. Knight c4 was played. My opponent played queen a6. He's like, give me the queen. What do we do? Now what? He wants to trade queens. Like I just won a few moves ago. Um, what do we do? How do we end the game? It's very close, by the way. The end is quite close and I would say nice. Although, yeah. How much serious work would get to the master title for a 1700 blitz? Well, that is completely up to you. I would say you should work quite a bit to get to master. Knight d6, yes. Here my opponent can't step on the d-file, right? Because I will just, if he steps on the d-file, I'll take this with check. Worst case, worst case. There's probably better, but worst case, I'm going to take his rook. I mean, not bad, right? So my opponent played king f8. All right, now how do we finish the game? This is the last part of the game. We're ending. So it's white to play. Knight f5. Knight f5, people says. Knight c8, also good. Knight c8, knight f5. Yeah, everyone is in shape. So what happens after knight c8, queen takes a3? What do you do? Checkmate, right? But I was like, I'm going to do this fancier. I don't want it to be like this. Like this bishop didn't move the whole game. It would be disrespectful to take it, right? So I'm like, I'm not going to take your bishop. I played knight f5. And my opponent, unfortunately, I highlight this word, unfortunately, he took my queen and then it's mate. I did deliver the checkmate. But the reason I said it's unfortunate because I really hoped my opponent played the move king g8. And what was my idea after king g8? I really wanted this, queen f8, yeah. This is what I was really hoping for. And this would have been a beautiful way to end the game. And after king takes, then rook d8. Like, that would have actually been a nice end to this game. Um, yeah, so hopefully this was, this was fun. As, as I always show, a lot of tactics, a lot of sacrifices, you know, all sorts of tactics in my games. And whenever I play the London, I really like to play it in the more dynamic style. Um, although it sometimes is a boring opening, but I would say if you can make it interesting, if you can play it very sharp, it's definitely an opening you can play dynamically and play it for a decent advantage so yeah thank you all for watching hopefully you enjoyed and learned something and hopefully you'll be 
playing uh, the London yourself and getting wins like this. So thank you all and take care. Thank you, thank you. Thank you.